Welcome to the 2016 Hockey SA Premier League Grand Final. Now we're about to get things underway with the women's match. We've got Port Adelaide warming up behind us. Now Port Adelaide Magpies are on their fifth straight title if they win this game today. It'll be the first time a women's team in Premier League history does that, five, five titles in a row. And of course their challenges today, Adelaide University. Now they played off against them two years ago, Adelaide University fell short, but this could be the year for them to dethrone Port Adelaide Magpies and get themselves their first ever Women's Premier League Championship in the club's history. We'll head upstairs and meet the teams. First battery slides it right, zigzag back, and it's gone in. Lovely goal there from Port Adelaide, well executed penalty corner. Hit from the top of the circle. Oh, it's managed to go in. They've slipped it underneath the keeper. Maddie Spano scores for Adelaide Uni. Welcome everybody, it's grand final day here in Adelaide at the State Hockey Centre. Um, first up we've got the Women's Premier League Grand Final, Port Adelaide playing against Adelaide University. I'm Tim White, I'd like to introduce my co-commentator Melody Cooper. Thanks Whitey. Yeah, this should be an interesting game. Obviously Port Adelaide have had a very, very strong season. They finished top of the ladder in the minor rounds with no losses whatsoever and, you know, I've got a very strong team that have been together for a long time. Um, uni are the underdogs in today's match, so you know they're going to have their work cut out for them, but I think they've got a very good team that can definitely challenge and be competitive in today's game. So yeah, hopefully the rain holds out and it doesn't get too too ugly out there and it's a, it's a good game. Absolutely. This time last year there was um, the sun was out and we were wondering how that was going to affect the players in the grand final and this year we've been... Um, waiting for the rain to hit and right on cue. It's um, just about to start now, so we'll see how that affects the game. Kiwi, do you want to introduce the teams before they get underway? Yeah, well, I think um, I'll just highlight a couple of players, sure. maybe in the Port Adelaide team that we um, can keep an eye out for. And yep. Sarah Harrison obviously is the captain for the side. She's played in 14 grand finals in a row. <laughs> So it's quite it's a phenomenal a um, record. Um, Jess Sibic up front is also a very handy, experienced player with Leah Wellstead in the midfield. Um, Courtney Rudd can also score a lot of goals as well as Beck Anderson. So they're two players that you wouldn't exactly want to leave alone um, in the forward line. Then they've got a couple of young ones as well in the team. Lindsay and um, also Celeste Ford and their goalkeeper, Emma Faint, really solid. So Sure, yep. And... We are underway and, and um, breaking through there is Lucy Holland-Smith. So she will test the Port Adelaide defence with her pace. She'd probably be the fastest player in the competition. Yeah. Her sister, Kate Holland-Smith, is also um, got similar attributes in terms of her athleticism. So she's one to watch. Uh, their forward line is quite quick because you've also got uh, Mickey Spano up there who is um, one of the, the better young players in the state. Um, She's in the national under-21 squad and uh, trying to um, trying to put herself into selection uh, for the Junior World Cup, which is coming up. So it'll be good to see how she copes. 
Probably also out there to note would be Amy Hunt in the middle. She controls the game a lot for uni. Um, and um, Janelle Pisani can also be dangerous on the ball. But, um, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how things play out early stages uh, as we speak. Support looking to play it quite wide and get that stretch going. So they're normally very um, good with their outletting, quite consistent. And Lindsay on the ball, she ended up winning the um, Rising Star Award with Hockey SA Awards this year, which is a fantastic award for an up-and-comer. Yeah, she did, and she also got named after the Under-18 Nationals um, in the National Futures squad, so she's certainly uh, a player with talent. That was her sister, Brooke Appleyard, um, on the ball, who who uh, sent that pass forward, and Brooke is just an incredibly experienced port player, one of the many players out there who've played in multiple grand finals. I think we've, we've looked at their stats, and I think it is their 16th grand final in a row, um, and um, they're looking to win five in a row, which I think you might have mentioned before, but uh, Lindsay on the ball now. She has got an aerial. Yeah, there it's good go. range. On cue. Good pick up by Leah, how about that? So Maddie Spano on the ball there at left half. So sister of Mickey Spano, both Mickey and Maddie, Maddie moved over from Burnside this year. Maddie has got a really strong um, hit on her and um, you'll see her use it often today. Uh, uni probably don't uh, outlet through their midfield or transfer as much as some other teams. They're fairly uncomplicated in the way they try and get the ball forward. Very much down the right side of Port's um, team so far. <laughs> yeah, it's a, a typical cautious opening to a, uh, a final as uh, players are, are finding their feet, so to speak. Hopefully it's an exciting contest. The last two games which we've seen out here this afternoon, both the Metro won men's and women's games. Both went to um, extra time and still couldn't be decided and went through to shootouts with Spock upsetting Adelaide and, um, and Uni, Adelaide Uni upsetting uh, Seacliff. So we've actually had uh, two exciting games to begin with and probably two upsets. Um, Port certainly the favourites here. Um, but games against these two teams have been really competitive throughout the year. I don't think there's been much in the games when they've played. The way the competition unfolded this year, um, it worked out that these two teams played each other uh, earlier in the season uh, a few times, yeah. but uh, haven't played each other for quite some time. So it's, um, and they haven't met in this final series either because uh, Port went straight through and Uni had to come the hard way with, uh, with a couple of wins in their finals coming from fourth position. Good tussle there. So those two, Mickey and Lyra, are two best mates, but um, they'll leave that behind during today's game. So Port Adelaide's coached by Bronte Pickett and the uni team are also coached by Barry Sibich. So yes. Bronte's um, got a very good record with Port Adelaide women. Oh, good opportunity there for Port to get up. Yeah, I think it's really important that Uni um, are tight at the back early and don't concede an early goal. I think the longer they can keep it tight and stay in the game, then the better chance they are of, of um, being competitive in this game. You could sense that if Port get on top, it might be difficult for, for the Uni girls today. Yeah, absolutely. You give them a little sniff and Port Adelaide will definitely dominate a team. They'll also be pretty wary um, of not conceding soft corners. The, the uni defence, uh, they've got some strengths on their corner battery with Carly Sims. Uh, Brooke Appleyard also finds herself scoring from quite a few corners. Sarah Harrison can get on the end of deflections. Courtney Rudd is a, a really strong presence on corners and also in, um, in general field play. So, um, yeah, uni would be certainly looking to be careful in their defensive circle. It's 
support have got one Suns player, Brooke Appleyard. And Uni have got four this year. They've got Mickey Spano, Maddie Spano, Amy Hunt, and Aaron Johnson. Yes, Aaron, the um, goal goalkeeper for Uni, has emerged this year um, and um, would be thrilled with her selection in the Suns team. So, yeah, five of these players will be heading to Perth in um, about 10 days' time, actually. It's good effort by Rudd. First PC of the match to Port Adelaide. So that was awarded after a strong run by Courtney Rudd through the um, left midfield channel. Um, actually initially not awarded by the officiating umpire, I think Shah Collett, um, but Meg Bourne, the, um, the other umpire, uh, helped her out and corner was given. So we'll see what they come up with. Um, you'd expect that Sims would be a chance to, um, to have a direct hit. They also sometimes work a little um, one-two where they, the ball ends up with Rudd sometimes. Um, anyway, we'll, we'll let it play out. Layoff left, great save. Would that hit the post? I think that might have hit yeah, the post. The way it, bounced it was a out terrific hit speed. by um, Courtney Rudd. It was a well-worked variation. And now Uni get a chance to get the ball forward for a rare attacking entry, but it was ended up being mishandled across the 25 yard. At this line, at this stage, we actually haven't seen Uni, I don't think, even enter their no, 25, let alone their circle. Port's definitely controlled it so far. But yes, Uni dodged a bullet there with, um, well, unless Aaron made the save of the century, I think it might have hit the post. Long corner for Port. Both these teams don't go to their um, benches as much as a lot of other teams do. Oh, well done by Here's Rudd, big Here's chance. an opportunity. Oh. Just missed the goal there. Had a great opportunity just to tap it into the open goal. Well, and but again, Rudd, Courtney Rudd, who, who I'm pretty sure was the player of last year's grand mm. final, has been the major factor early. She had the, uh, earned the early corner. Her shot was hit the post. She then had that chance then, and, and the ball then fell to her. In fact, somehow it ballooned over the net, and it, when it seemed it was actually harder to, to miss the goal than to score. So yeah. um, great opportunity for Port, who are well and truly on top early in this match. Yeah, I was saying that both teams don't go to their benches as much as a lot of other teams um, in the competition, so they'd probably be quite happy with the fact that it's not a, a warm day today. Good run along the baseline there for Jess Sibich, so free hit for Port just outside the circle. Yeah, Jess is another one of the Port players oh, that's no, just corner. Yeah. formed the, the basis of many a, a Premiership team over the, the last decade or so. Yeah, absolutely. Her um, dad actually got inducted as a life member at the Hockey SA Awards. Trevor Sibich. Yes. He's also, you know, very strong household name. The Sibich family have done very well at Port Adelaide. So yeah, it was great absolutely. to have that recognition for him. That was. Lindsay Appleyard has started the game well. Celeste Ford also has. She's moved into a, uh, the key sweeper role. Um, this year for Port Adelaide, moving across from Seacliff um, at the start of last year. So she she played a uh, she played in her first senior premiership last year, and now she's generally the the sweeper for Port and is doing a, a really good job this year and has and has started well today. So this is the first attacking opportunity, probably really for for Uni. Oh, high ball. Certainly one of the set plays of um, uni when, when Lucy 
Holland Smith and Cater over the ball. They like to self-play and to use their pace. Unfortunately, the ball that oh. was just lifted. Ball's popped up there into Courtney Rudd's mouth. That was well defended by Uni. Looked like there was a, a chance to earn a corner for Port, but they um, soaked it up well. There isn't much stretch happening from Uni here, so it's quite a compressed game at the moment. I think against a team like Port, you want to try and open it up. Good intercept there. Yeah, she stepped up well there, Lindsay, because if, if um, Kate Holland-Smith was able to receive that, she had some space in behind. But you're right, Kiwi, at, um, when uh, Uni are outletting, they, they aren't getting um, a lot of stretch, and I think that's making it hard for them to, um, to get some midfield space and then to get it forward. Really good interplay from Wellstead and Sivic. Oh, it's getting a little bit, a little bit messy. So free hit the other way. Sarah Harrison actually needs to carry the ball five metres before she can take it into the circle, and I think that's what Shah's called. So good pressure there. It was good pressure. Well, um, soaked up, I think, by Dawes at the back, but um, Courtney Rudd certainly um, put on a strong press there. So not unexpectedly, Port controlling the game, controlling the possession, earning um, any chances that have, that have uh, been in the match so far have been earned by Port. And Uni still yet to get their teeth into the game, but they haven't yet conceded. So um, you'd like to think that they'd be able to build into the game. Got a bit of pace here, Uni. It was well defended by Brooke Appleyard. Good little bit of skill there by Leah. Really nice skill by Wellstead. Amy. Oh. Dangerous cross. Lifted ball though. You'll notice when Wellstead dribbles, number 36 for Port, um, she's actually sort of moved her right hand further up the stick and a little bit like one of your um, former teammates, Mickelson from um, New Zealand, yeah. who uh, probably does it better than anyone in the world. Helps get the vision up so that she can offload the ball a lot easier. So when you can develop that skill, it's very handy. Wellstead's had a, a really good season for Port Adelaide this year. Um, she was leading the SA vote count uh, until the last um, vote of the night when um, Holly Evans from North East Got the three votes um, against Seacliff, I think, and uh, Holly ended up winning by one vote from Leah. So she certainly had a good season. Definitely. She's a key playmaker for the Port team, that's for sure, and her ability to break through the lines um, helps set up their offence quite well. But someone who's um, quite sneaky for Port, Beck Anderson, who's getting the ball now, who did a very good shot and set that up. Well done, Port. Yeah. And that was right on cue by um, yeah. my co-commentator Kiwi. So um, I think it was Brooke Appleyard who made the interception, dished the ball off to um, Beck Anderson for the shot. It was a really good first save by Erin Bell and Nett, and um, Courtney Rudd was there to put away a simple um, rebound. So Port rewarded for their early dominance in the in the first 15 minutes. Well, this could, one of two things could happen here. You could have Port basically just growing in confidence and continuing to take charge of the game um, and make it really hard for Uni, or maybe it might actually um, uh, force Uni to come out of their shells a little bit um, and try to play to their strengths, which, uh, as we talked about at the start, is their um, speed up front, which, unfortunately, we haven't seen a lot of as yet. No, not yet. Like they've... Port would be very happy at the moment that uh, Mickey Spano, number eight, who's you know one of the, the key forwards, 
hasn't ever had the ball beyond her in her own uh, attacking half at this point. She's spent, I think, most of the time back defending. So, um, yeah, we'll see uh, see how Uni respond to the to the early goal. That's Sophie Fry on the ball, number ten for Uni. She's had a really consistent year um, and has certainly played her way into being a regular in the in the Uni team this year. One thing's for sure, Uni's finding it quite hard to get out of that little pocket on the 16s. Fort's press is quite tight. There we go, Mickey on the ball. Yeah, and you've got the player in behind there. Good pace there from Uni, that's exactly that, what they need to do. Kate it's good Holland strength. Smith. Be long corner for Uni. So that was Uni's best um, moment of the game and, and um, not surprisingly there key playmakers were involved. You had Amy Hunt winning the ball in the midfield. You had Mickey Spano breaking through and then Kate Holland-Smith using her pace. And now we've got the other Holland-Smith yes. in Lucy. Oh. So uh, Uni will be encouraged by those, um, by, by that last two minutes. They've shown that, um, as, as we've known, that if they've got the ball in space up front, that their pace can ask questions of the port defence. So, it's just a matter of whether they can get enough of those opportunities, whether they can take those opportunities, and then how well they can defend Port, who have been doing this pretty well today it's with their outletting. Received by Leah there. Just open it up to the other side of the pitch. Ooh. Beck Anderson <laughs> hunting around Beck the Anderson front of the Anderson hunting goal. around. Again, really well worked um, into play along the right-hand side. Wellstead was the one who broke the line uh, and found Rudd, who... who uh, Put a dangerous ball into the circle, but it was well defended. It's good strength there by Jess Sibic and earned a PC for Port Adelaide. So that's their second one for the game. Yes, their first one um, was the one that thumbed into the post yes. off the stick of Rudd. So um, you'd think that um, Carly Sims might be saying, I'll, I'll give this one I'll a step go. Up. <laughs> as the rain starts to fall heavier. Miss trap there by Port, so here's an opportunity for Uni. Really nice Went intercept by um, Lindsay. She did really well there to hold up the play. Kate Holland-Smith oh. drifting off the back there, but a miss hit by Amy Hunt. Wellstead's Good. probably been the key midfielder at this stage um, I agree. from both teams. So there's a couple of good matchups around the park at the moment. And I'd say that Lee's definitely um, been winning hers currently. Interesting then when Port outletted that Uni um, almost sat back and um, allowed them to have the ball at the back. I wondered if they might try and press a bit hard, but I guess they want to try and um, compress the midfield somewhat. Um, but we'll see if that was just played out then or whether that's a, a tactic that they use throughout the game. Again, you've mentioned, Kiwi, that this has been a part of the game that Uni has struggled with, with their outletting. Yeah, look, I think Port's been able to intercept quite a few and the sweep has picked up a number of balls as well because Uni have had no other option other than, other than you know, trying to hit long. Yes, Port again put, put pressure on Uni there. They, Port are certainly full pressing. They are. They've put some good pressure on the ball so far. That was Juliet Mallison on the ball. I think she's just come on the field. So, um, young Riverland girl who's now in Adelaide. Ooh. 
I mean, this game is is uh, playing out perfectly uh, for Port Adelaide at the moment. It's certainly on their terms. Well set again with good tackle there by Matty. Good receive, but yes, Spano dealt with it well. Matty Spano. Another PC. Again, really well worked by Port Adelaide. You've often uh, see Jess Sibic involved in those um, entries into the circle and free hits. Um, she popped the ball into Juliet Mallison, who rolled the ball onto a uni defender's foot. And this is their third PC, I think. Yeah, third PC. I just saw um, Bronte get the call on. To Carly. Well, the last one was meant to go to Sims for a hit, but was missed. Um, handled at the top, so we'll see what they come up yep. with. Another miss trap. Oh, I think it just hit the hit the foot there. Yeah, I think it came off a, a port foot before it was put in the put in the goal. But again, that's um, two of the three corners that Port have had. Uh, they've uh, haven't trapped them cleanly at the top, mm -hmm. so it's kind of the, only the one part of the game that isn't really working for Port at the moment. Is a good opportunity for Uni. So that was Winnie Hill on the ball, um, who um, helped to penetrate the circle there. She's moved over from Forestville earlier in, in the season. Yeah, Uni's um, DPC work is actually generally pretty good because they're quite quick out. Amy Hunt transferring to the open side. This will be a good foot race between Sarah Harrison. Also Lucy. Really good skill on pace by Holland Smith there. Good composure there from Carly coming out of defence. Courtney Rudd can again. certainly um, use her pace and she's done so just then, but well intercepted at the back. Um, I think that was Laura Cooper, number four for Uni. Self play from Spano. Oh, strong, Good, strong tackle from there Celeste from Ford. Celeste. And a, um, First a definite um, corner for a deliberate breach outside the circle. Um, so that was Mickey Spano's first opportunity to impact the game from an attacking sense. And um, yeah, she was dealt with um, strongly by um, Celeste Ford. So we'll see what Uni can come up with here. They scored a couple of PCs against. Um, Burnside last week. Maddie Spano scored them both. One she scored direct and the other one she picked up off the battery and opened up the angle a little bit and then also hit the balls. We also see sometimes number nine Amy Hunt uh, flicking from the first battery so maybe Spano might get this one. Miss Trap at the top. Well defended there by Port. So Uni will not get a whole lot of chances and they can't um, afford to um, to not get shots away. Good opportunity for Port here with two it's players open. Oh, that's... I think that was pretty good goalkeeping. I don't think she had control of the ball. But again, that came from um, a breakdown at the other end, didn't it? Yeah, there was a quick outlet on the PC there, and I think Port did well to get the ball up quite quickly before Uni were able to get their defence back. Leah showing good skill in the pocket down there. Free hit just outside the circle. So, yep, well, is it well stead on the ball? Yes. She sometimes likes to run it under reverse, but Spano's aware of that, I think. Mm 
Well stepped up by Celeste Ford then. Again, this is where Lucy Holland-Smith liked the ball. Open space in front of her. Really well Good defended defense, by, by Port. Celeste mm. Ford, wasn't it? Just patient there. need to be careful tackling like that that was close to a deliberate beach but it might have been just outside the 25 which it was so if it had been a yard further in it may have been given as a deliberate breach and turned into a corner so you can start to see players visibly tiring I was just about to say that um, Mickey Spano I think is calling She, I she's think, either um, calling for a substitution or maybe even a glove. She normally wears a glove and she hasn't got it on at the moment, so. See so Uni looking to really bash it out of that pocket again. I don't, unless I'm wrong, I don't think we've seen Uni transfer. From an outlet, and I don't think we've seen them throw it into their midfield. Mm, I think not very they've often. pretty well hit each time, which we talked yeah. about earlier. It is certainly their way of play. It's pretty simple and direct. Yeah, Porter doing a full press, which does make it a little bit harder. Um, but their press is actually quite flat, so they could, Uni you know, could you know, look to transfer it around the back and try and open it up to the other side if they do it quickly. That was Maddie Spanner on the ball and she certainly, that's a that's a, a go-to. She certainly likes to drive it down the line. Good pick out there by Amy Hunt. So that was a, a good press by Uni. They pressed up, forced the ball into the midfielder, then Amy Hunt stole it off of Wellstead and won the ball in, the, in their attacking area. Good courage there by Sarah Harrison. She really um, gets out and puts pressure on them quite quickly. claiming that it came off a, a uni foot but umpire Meg Bourne is staying with her original decision so another opportunity Spano last time tried to run at five and and then um, hit it in that's Amy Hunt on the ball Lucy looking for a ball. tummer So it's the first period of, of play that Uni have had where they've held the ball up and they're attacking 25 um, with a few repeat opportunities to enter the circle. Looking to hit it in again. Yep. Again, simple, yep. uncomplicated, can be effective, but Port pretty well set defence and experienced and were able to mop it up. Yeah, look, it's a good tactic to ask questions of the defence, especially with the trapping. Um, you can find the odd deflection and tip in with the headed in strategy. So, oh, well defended. Bit of a stick clash in the middle of the field there between, I think it was Bilton and Sivic. Good pressure by Tess Lee, who is, um, um, I think, originally country-based. Has been over in England for a couple of years. Good receive there by Maud. Oh, looking to transfer it, which is a good option. Great shave tackle there. Yeah, that's one of her strengths with mm. her tackling.
So we're into the last four minutes of this half. You know, Uni really needs to probably just knock one in before the end of this half to, you know, put a bit of pressure, especially on Port, who have dominated possession so far. Yeah, I'm sure Port will be fairly happy to date with the way things have played out. I'm sure they would have rather than another goal to mm. uh, assert their authority on the scoreboard, um, more so than they have with just the one goal. But as we've said a few times, they have um, had more possession, certainly earned the better chances, had more PCs to date um, and have deserved their lead at this stage of the game. But it's only a Good only one goal lead. And the game yeah. can change quickly, as we know. Good Strong. tackle by Brooke Appleyard there. Ooh. Important intercept by Maddie Spanner. You had Beck Anderson floating in behind again. Yeah. <laughs> Long corner to Port. No ball boys today. Bit surprising. Yeah. They certainly helped to speed it up. Speed the game up. I'm thinking maybe the two teams that are out there don't mind though. Oh. Gives them a chance to, to catch their breath somewhat. Well read by Maddie Spano. So it looks like Wellstead goes into the middle when Apple Yard comes off into the centre mid roll. Jess will look to force PC. Good roll there. And again. Ooh. Ooh. <coughs> so the experienced hands from Port combining there in Harrison and Sibic. And um, in the end, Uni scrambled the ball clear. Oh, loose ball there. Again, desperate defending and well defended by Uni. Good break by Holland Smith. Lindsay Appiard is one of the quicker players out there as well. And she was managed to, to stay with Kate Holland Smith there. Yeah, she recovered quite well, I think. Stayed in the contest and just didn't let her play get past her. So the rain's been holding out so far, which is quite good. It has. The temperature's dropped. The, um, the tents on the far side of the State Hockey Centre earlier in the day were used for sun shelter and now they're used for for uh, rain protection, but the Vale Ale Bar is still being well frequented. <laughs> so Vale Brewing, Brewing, Brewing is a, a strong supporter of South Australian hockey. So, it's been close to one of the last plays to see out the half. If you they can will, get the ball. They might run out of time, they'll try and crash it in. But easily that defended by Wellstead. And, yeah. and that wraps up the first half. So as we were saying before, Kiwi, um, uh, probably a fairly predictable first half. It was played on uh, the favourites' terms, on Port's terms, and they were able to um, capitalise early and have a few other chances to extend their lead. <laughs> All right, I'm here with Sarah on the field now. Tough first half, neck and neck. You do have the one up. How are you feeling? Yeah, if you'd say uh, at halftime we'd be one nil up, we'd take that every day of the week. But there's another 35 minutes. Anything could happen. It's grand final day. So we're just going to flog it out for another 35 and hopefully get the job done. No worries. Best of luck. Get out there. Thanks. So second half about to start. Port Adelaide leading 1-0 and well on top in that first half. Uh, interesting to see if Uni throw up anything different. It looks to me as though Amy Hunt may have moved to maybe a few structural changes. 
Janelle Pisani moved to centre mid. Uh, Amy Hunt to attacking mid. I think that's probably a switch since half time. Yeah. Mickey Spano's also lined up in the midfield at left midfield, um, playing on Leo Wellstead, which should be a great matchup. And as we talked about in the first half, Leo Wellstead was probably the key midfielder of the game. So it looks like Barry Sivich has responded to that by taking Mickey Spanner out of the forward line and uh, into the midfield, which is a little bit like robbing Peter to pay Paul, but um, <laughs> good to see I that, um, good to see that uh, some changes have been made because it looked um, as though Port were controlling the game fairly well. What do you think, Kiwi? Yeah, good observation there. Obviously, that is a tactic to try and shut down Port's key playmaker, but I think the challenge is there's a couple of others in Port that could probably just step up to, um, you know, shine in the second half. The other thing that we've just seen on that first outlet is Spano on the ball. Um, you saw Kate Holland-Smith uh, basically pushing herself all the way up to the top and providing the stretch that we talked about that wasn't there in that first half. So, yes. again, that's obviously only early and the first uh, opportunity for uni to do it, but we didn't see it at all in the first no. half and we've already seen it this half. So we'll, um, we'll see if that becomes a pattern. But uni have certainly started with better, better intent and intensity. Good touch there by Janelle. Oh, well intercepted there by Maddie. Opportunity here, here for Holly Smith. She has got a reverse Pull the trigger. shot. Oh. And the corner earned. So the first PC, well, the only PC that Uni had was uh, mishandled at the top, and it was actually an opportunity for um, Port to score at the other end. Uh, but it was going out for Maddie Spano. She looked like she was going to carry it across the top and then hit it, but she's moved to the first battery here. Um, you'd expect the ball to go to her. Saved by Emma Faint there. Oh, came off the body of a uni player. Yeah, so, 16. Yeah, so that's the first time Faint's been called in to yep. make a save, I believe. I think and, that's her and first touch. Handed it well. That was a bit of a goal mouth scramble. Opportunity for uni. It actually was meant to go to Amy Hunt for probably a, a drag flick at the top. And in the end, it, the push out was, um, the inject was inaccurate. And Lucy Holland Smith stood up and uh, took the shot, uh, and it was a good opportunity for Uni. But yeah, you can definitely see Uni uh, taking the game more to, to Port. They they were a little bit on the, the back foot, I felt, in that first half, uh, and, and Port dictated terms, and Uni needed to do something about that, and it looks like they um, are certainly trying that early in this half. He's got a very strong hit outletting from the back. Oh, it's a good intercept there by Janelle Sani. Yeah, they're just starting to win a few physical battles. Yeah. Here. Oh. Oh. I, think all, every, I think the only person on the field who thought that was the umpire, every player from both teams went the other way. Long corner. It's a good transfer. So apple yard to apple yard there, and <laughs> Lindsay driving yeah, into the true. circle. She's quite quick. She's very um, versatile in, in terms of her hockey as well. She went away with the under-21 state team earlier in the year and played a striker at that level. Scored a couple of goals. And then when she went to the under-18. National Championships in the middle of the year, she played as the centre back, and um, and here she is playing at um, at right Half back for Port. So, yeah, flexibility is one of her strengths. 
supporter doing a full press again, so it'll be interesting to see how Uni cope with that today. Carly Sims is one of the best traps in the game. Yeah, she's, she's got a very got good a eye. Great eye. Good open received there by Courtney. Oh, Ooh, and that may well be a nice corner. Be a PC with hitting that ball away. Have to be careful with Surprising that. Surprising that it's not. I thought that was well after the uh, well after the whistle. Mm. The yeah, the umpires took a, a lenient approach there. Um, I think it was Sophie Fry who been knocked it away. Yeah, so Uni are definitely looking for that stretch a bit more. Yep, there Which it is, is again. Which is good, because they ask questions of the defence, and then, you know, if a mistrap happens, they're away, it's one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, unless they... Unless they I think the other thing they might have to do is potentially transfer the ball a little more before Absolutely. they look for the longer ball because Carly oh. Sims, oh, if, she's, if she's well set up, will intercept most of those. Bit of a clash over there between who? Wellstead. Yeah. Who was and the Maud, uni player involved? Maud Taylor? Maud Taylor just collided there. And Paul Lear was the one that came off second best. Yeah, Wellstead's brushed herself off. She, um, she didn't play much part in Port's premiership last year she if you remember correctly she came off with an ankle yeah, injury after right. about 20 minutes um, tried to come back on but um, uh, wasn't able to uh, get herself right so she's certainly uh, well, looking to atone for that and has been okay it's a bit of hidden hope on that one though unfortunately Yeah, well, the intensity of the game's gone up a notch, which is great. Um, it's pleasing to see that um, it's a good contest. Game's a bit more open, I think, there. with uni stretching. Good eye there by Amy Hunt. Yeah, I think if they can get it to the other side of the pitch, it certainly opens it up. Quick free from Jess Sibich. Loves the little push pass into the circle and you'll be surprised how many of them just sneak through because she puts a little um, little lift on those passes into the circle. And Yeah, the lifted balls into the circle are hard to deal with for the defenders. For defenders, absolutely. Good battle there between Book um, Apple Yard and Lucy Holland-Smith. Again, there's a zinger-style pass from Maddie Spano, and it's fallen to Kate, who could penetrate the circle here. Kelly Sims, good touch. Still an opportunity Needed for you. Needed to touch that. PC. And again, it was, as we've talked about all day, it was the uncomplicated hockey from Uni. You had Maddie Spano on the ball. She didn't hit that one, but she did a, a low, um, bouncy ball pass that was hard to uh, read by the port defence. It fell to Kate Holland-Smith. She attacked the circle, got it into a dangerous part of the circle, and a, uh, I think it was probably given for a stick check or obstruction. Um, so Uni will be keen to get this one out cleanly and trap cleanly so they can um, look to get a shot away. But they're, they're getting their way back into the game. Easy save there for Carly Sims. That's posty. Yeah, that is... Um, Shelling peas for Carly. She was well set and the ball was perfectly flat and she had no problem dealing with no. it. a solid outlet from Port. They have outletted well today yeah, and have. now they're through oh, here. Great pass. Oh. Wellstead lost control of it, got a second bite at it, but um, in the end it, it came to nothing. But that was, you know, started from an outlet deep in Port's left, which is a difficult place to get the ball out of. Uni mm. were full pressing. 
but Brooke Appleyard was the person that broke the lines and uh, did a scything pass through to Leo Wellstead. Well defended by Maud, Maud Taylor. Good hold up there by Port. Port have pulled their press back a little bit there and Uni um, transferred to the right hand side. Oh, Called cool for a dangerous ball there. Yeah. Interesting call. Great yeah, ball easy. by Appleyard. Oh, this could be a free hit outside. Just a little bit closer to the circle and Brooke would have got a PC there, I think. Yep, saw a little bit of um, understanding, a bit of telepathy between the sisters there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, PC. Ball has to go five metres because um, Janelle Pisani actually started within the five metres on the free hit there. And unfortunately, Brookie hadn't actually carried the ball further enough away for her to be able to play at that. It's a bit it's of a, it's a new rule that's kind of been introduced in the last couple of years. And not an easy one to it? understand even by people who play the game, let alone <laughs> people who are... Um, occasional spectators if you like so that's not right. what uni needed they were working their way back into it and this gives port a chance to um and and they'll they'll get one of these right soon they they fumbled a few at the top in the first half oh slight miss hit there by carly well defended there by mickey spano got yeah. her left hand on the ground but again it was not clean by port so as we said in the first half it's one part of their game that um hasn't quite been on song today, except for the first one where Rudd got a, a really powerful shot away. Ford will probably send this one in. Sweep it in. Oh, good. PC. Again, Jess Sivich is, is really strong and powerful in those sort of situations, and she's been often the catalyst for earning the, the corners. Also interesting to see her coming back off the um, <coughs> corner battery. She's, um, she's had an eye for, for goal in these situations before, but she's pulled back off the circle. So the last one was meant for, for Sims for a direct hit. They didn't quite get it away. Rudd hasn't uh, been given an opportunity for a while, so. One, two. Oh, well defended again. Yeah, so that's a little wall pass or one, two yeah. move that Port liked to do. It was well read by uh, Uni, and I think it was Amy Hunt who stepped up and... Um, Denied Port the shot in the end. I think if they... But they're um, working a, another corner here. Yeah. We're working 4-1, but Uni managed to avoid that. Yeah, on that last PC, Leah Wellstead was sitting free on the post there. If they can slip it to her, I think that would have been a goal. Celeste cleaning up again. Looking to get it to the open side, which is good. Nice drag there by Leah. Oh, good that skill. looked like back of the stick. And hitting the ball and away the ball again. Uni just getting away with that, I think. It's best just to leave that alone. <coughs> Jess Jessie. Sivich again posting up. Yeah, and that's a real strength of Jessie's is being able to post up and find the ball. They use her a lot for that. It 
It's good strength over by Sarah Harrison. Amy Hunt. Good touch there by Celeste. Shave tackles going everywhere. Yes. <laughs> A good it's midfield good. battle in the end, so Uni, you've soaked up some pressure there. Crowd starting to get involved yeah, a little bit. Are. That's West happened again. That's happened far too often. Yep, so it's a good Forward ball. Forward has been well set. The great ball. Should probably work a Simic PC here. Looking to get available. Oh, right. It's still an opportunity here for Port. That's a good ball. Great opportunity. Yeah, it's a good finish there by Courtney. Courtney right again. So yeah. um, she. Certainly is a big game player. She scored in uh, many grand finals. She scored both today. Uh, really well set up initially by Celeste, Celeste Ford's inter Beck. intercept yeah. um, and, uh, and passed uh, Rebecca Anderson. Um, and then uh, Wellstead got involved, found um, Rudd, who uh, had the first shot, followed it up and scored the rebound. Yeah, there was some good individual play in that goal. Got a bit of pace there, Tess. She's quite quick. Fair enough. Yeah, that is certainly her number one asset, her speed. So good response by Uni, but they're going to have to need to respond. This Port team, you'd be very surprised if they gave up a two-goal lead with the experience that they've got in their group. Um, and Uni need to respond immediately. Ooh. Good tackle, actually. Yeah, another yeah, good well tackle done. by Wallstead. Sims will slow things oh. down here, use all their experience. Nice little aerial there. Not five metres. No, the umpire saw it, Kiwi, relax. <laughs> oh, here we go. It's good. Ooh. Well defended there by Uni. Yeah, it's it's hard. Hard. Sorry, buddy. I was just going to say, it's hard to see. Um, you know, the more Uni push forward, the more they're going to open themselves up at the back, and Port have got certainly some dangerous players up front, so Uni have got a big job in front of them, it's certainly not beyond them. And again, Celeste Ford, well set at um, sweeper or, or the free defender, so a uh, lovely Great pass there, there by Sims to Harrison. Yeah, her distribution is very good. Port just looked as though they've, um, you know, Uni came out and threw a bit at them in the first 15 minutes, yeah. and Port now have, have got their pass confidence. Again. Leah, ooh. Really need someone on the far post there. Yeah, I mean, it's the game is opening up now. That's probably where the rotations definitely come into play. Like, I think for you need to try and, you know, step the tempo of the game up, they, they should probably rotate a little bit more. I think so. Well done by That's Tess. a good save. Good pace here. They're Sims both forced to cover quick. some ground here. Yep. Yeah, so you just saw uh, Mickey Spano coming off. She hasn't um, been able to have a great influence at midfield um, in this first part of the, the half. Well said, That's again, as soon as Spano's come well off, done. well said, has got off the leash yeah. there a little bit. But, um, and here she is again. It'll be interesting to see what Barry Sivic chooses to do with Mickey Spano. Um, after her rest, so you can imagine she'd only been off for two or three minutes and then be thrown back out there for the rest of the game. Um, you'd suspect she might get thrown forward, um, having uh, tried uh, her in the midfield, but that remains oh, to be seen. Snuck through.
Yeah, uni's very quiet at the moment. I know it's a tough ask because they're down 2-0, but that's when you really want people to step up, you know, your key players to stay involved and get their voice going. Yeah, you're just not sure right now where their spark's going to come from. Port just, you know, Mopping up. Port looked like a team that have uh, dominated the comp in recent years, have yeah. dominated this year, having not um, not lost a game all year. Um, and right now, they'd be very happy with the way the game's being played Ooh. out. Having said that... There's a chance. Oh. Good save there by Emma Faint. Yeah, so Faint hasn't been called on too often, a couple of times. And Twice. <laughs> done what she's needed to do. Um, so just when we were singing Port's praises, a turnover at the back by um, an errant pass, I think, by Sims, uh, an opportunity was created. And so Uni just have to take up one of those opportunities. So they just have to make something happen somehow and pretty soon. So Spano back on the pitch. Um, it looks to me as though she's gone back to... Um, Back to striker. Leah again, breaking through. And she's followed yep, up here. good one too. Oh. oh. Just needed to keep a little tighter control right mm. at the end there, but... Done some good work getting up there. She has. Here we go. Well defended there by Appleyard. So we've been fortunate with the weather. The clouds are building. Um, but at this stage, we've had some light rain, but that's all we've had. Um, the men's game is following this, starting at 6 o'clock tonight. And so um, forecasters expect that it's going to come in by then. But you never know. We might be lucky. Good running by Holland Smith. Keep running. <laughs> Well, well stepped with another steal. Rudd well. dangerous here. Oh. oh. Just on the bounce there. Lost a little bit of control. Yeah, Rudd had a chance to mm. ice the game and also secure her hat-trick, and she knows it. But, um, yeah, she uh, mishit her forehand shot after after the backhand slide was easily dealt with by Erin Bell in the uni net. It's certainly less cleaning up. Isn't yeah. there? There's certainly some players who are visibly getting tired. Mm. Is this Nicola Higgins? I was just looking at that. It is. Yep, so she's a, one of the young Port players. I think she's, well, she's probably oh. only 15 or 16, I reckon, Nicola. Yeah, so that's great experience for her at her age to be playing in grand final. You can see um, one thing you notice watching uh, these two teams play is the amount of leadership, um, the obvious leadership that you can see from the Port Ooh, team. Jeez. They're continually well done there by <laughs> communicating with each other and people like um, Carly Sims is driving that, Brooke Appleyard, Sibic, Sarah mm -hmm. Harrison, Celeste Ford's become a key um, to this team over the past couple of years. And yeah, they're certainly not allowing any sort of complacency to set in. Um, they're not looking at the scoreboard or the clock. They're basically just going to play out this game and uh, look to secure yet another flag. Yeah, structurally their um, players have been a lot more cohesive and, you know, they can 
switch it to the opposite side of the field a lot easier without any hassles and just their open receives. I think it's quite noticeable between the two teams that they, um, you know, can open it up and break lines. People like Jesse just constantly presenting for the ball. That's what you want. Maddie Spano lifting a couple of balls. <laughs> yeah. Trying well, to hit. be standing in front of um, her doing a strong press when she's on the ball. Interesting skill by Mickey Spano, his sister there. That's what you need. You just have to do every single yeah. time they get an opportunity. They just need to play it quickly and try and use their pace to get in behind. Oh, slow ball beat everybody. It did beat everyone except for Wellstead. <laughs> Another good physical battle between uh, Sivic and Hunt in the, in the midfield. They've got three players deep in their circle. Adelaide Uni, well but read. well read by Harrison. Take off. Oh, there's Beck Anderson leading. Oh, good pick up because she was... <laughs> An important Q, yeah. intercept. Oh, that's oh, a PC. Yeah, that's poor discipline and then, by Uni. Um, she let herself down by um, that breach, and you would suspect that if Port were uh, able to put this one in the back of Uni's net, that um, that would well and truly be the nail in the coffin. So they've had their huddle at the top. Again, their key players are on the circle edge with Rudd on battery one and um, Sims on battery two. Anderson and Ford, Trappers and um, Wellstead injecting. You've got Mallison and Sarah Harrison who'll be going in for the, the rebounds or deflections. Not sure PC. if it was intentionally meant for... Uh, a deflection for Harrison, but it certainly went that way. And um, a second a repeat penalty corner earned uh, after it came off a uni foot, I think. And there's a sealer. Great shot. Straight. Um, finally, to be honest, after many opportunities, Port managed to um, get a fluid penalty corner off. Uh, well injected by Wellstead. A clean trap by Celeste Ford and Carly Sims doing what she uh, does best and lashing it into the bottom of the goal past the, um, through the postie on uh, the keeper's left-hand side. She's got a nice little dip on her hit, which also helps. It's quite hard for a postie to try and make that trap. So yes, we've got six and a half minutes remaining. You've got um, Port Adelaide, a team full of experience, leading by three goals, looking to win their f unprecedented fifth premiership in yep. a row. Um, so you'd almost think they would let them stop and let themselves in enjoy this last five minutes, I'm sure. Bronte, or six minutes, I'm sure Bronte Pickett will be um, not allowing those thoughts to creep in or not allowing the, the players' thoughts to creep in. Or that. But, um, yeah, it's hard to see this game not, um, uh, not turning out to be anything other than an expected and yet another Port Premiership. Oh, oh there's... Beck. <laughs> Great elimination. Fire it past. Oh, that's a crucial touch there by Amy Hunt. Courtney Rudd was getting ready to <laughs> trap that on the penalty spot and pop it in the goal for her uh, third goal. Excellent play by Rebecca Anderson. 
She's one of the better high forwards in the state. Yeah. Her ability to read the play and um, find spaces that other forwards um, don't find. And Porter very good at um, getting Finding the ball her. along to yeah. her in those pockets. Sivic again trying to um, post up and then roll. Holland Smith with space in front of her. It's a good, good line there by Celeste. Just needed to... Yes. Oh. Oh, a little bit of tension in the game here. Good tackle there by Brooke. Just keep it simple, nice pop. And again, right oh, idea. Brooke, Brookie Appleyard <laughs> putting on a bit of a clinic there with yep. a bit of 3D and then look for an inside drag. Oh, but um, unfortunately, didn't collect it, but uh, beautiful skill. So you can just see a little bit of niggle coming in. I think Uni can sense that the game has slipped away. Good intercept. Yeah, a couple of good intercepts mm. in by Sophie Fry, and she's pushing forward as well. Great tackle. She's got a very good eye, Brooke Appleyard. Yep. Port just need a hold position here and wind down the clock. Good run there by Beck. Yeah, and that'll just help soak up a few more minutes or a few more valuable seconds. Mm. So Wellstead likes to run the ball on her reverse and, and tomahawk it across, but uh, Kate Holland-Smith looks as though she's awake to that. Or is she? Oh, she's turned in on her forehand. Uni still chasing their elusive premiership um, and um, they've done a good job this year getting into the grand final after finishing in fourth position they um, beat the peas toppled, beat toppled your peas in, yep. a, in a tight game was it three two uh, it was a close two, game anyway two nil I think two nil um, and then um, and then got over Burnside in a, mm. in a tight match last uh, last week so get through to the grand final um, but uh, this will not be their year to uh, break their drought uh, look Port's um, played a very good game they've held position been disciplined in defense their outletting has been very good I think their stretch yeah, has had, also helped. they've had very few passengers mm. really if you look at you know right, across great. their um, playing group which is littered with um, you know players who know how to win grand finals as they always do or always seem to do at this time of the year they've stood up um, and have all played their part in, in this victory oh, that's still in oh just gone out <laughs> hit the post I actually think for uni, Amy Hunt has not given up the whole game. She's actually chased down quite a few balls. Yep. Yeah, no, she's you been know, a presence in the, the midfield. Double teams. Courtney Rudd might be a chance here. Oh. Port Last minute. Running the game all the way to the end. They're looking for um, one more goal to seal the victory. Keep it simple. Oh. 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 
So the dying seconds of what has been a um, uh, entertaining contest. Fantastic so, effort for Port. There they are. That's yeah, have not lost the game. So, yeah, for a team to go through the season undefeated, to then not concede a goal, I don't think, in the final series. I think they beat Burnside 2-0 to qualify for the grand final. They've then beaten Uni 3-0 in, in the grand final. Um, and they're um, very, very strongly deserving champions uh, once again in 2016. As we've talked about um, through the course of the commentary, that is their fifth premiership in a row, um, dating back to 2012. Um, and by the looks of the way in which they're celebrating, it looks like they've never won one before. They're that excited. So they, um, you know, they, they play all year for their final series, effectively. Um, yeah, that's right. And then they raise their game to another level um, and don't allow teams the, the opportunity to, to take their title away or, or not as yet. And um, congratulations to them. Yeah, I think Bronte Pickett will be absolutely stoked with, um, you know, the girls, the way they play today. I think the tempo definitely picked up in the second half, which was good. They played a lot faster and, you know, they, they definitely dominated the match. So well done to Port Adelaide and Sarah Harrison and the team. I think Uni should be fairly happy with um, their season because getting to the grand final, I know they'll be disappointed, but Barry Sivich has done a great job with uh, the team so like throughout the year. All right, well, um, we'll throw down now to David Muggleton, who's... Um down on the sidelines with, um, with hopefully uh, someone from the winning team. I'm here with Carly and Courtney from the victorious Port Adelaide Magpies. Five in a row. How about that feeling? The best, best feeling ever. Some people don't even get to play in these and like the fact that we get to play in so many and five in a row is just unbelievable. I just, I'm blown away. I yeah. can't. I just can't. It's the best feeling ever. Now conditions got a little bit rough out here. We lucked out most of the winter, yeah. but we got a bit wet, wet and windy. How did we hold up? Yeah, pretty good. We've had it all season, so it's no real different. Um, we probably would have preferred to play a bit earlier, but we dealt with it and now five in a row. So, yeah, pretty good. Yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah. Now, with that win, most successful women's Premier League club in history. How about that photo going up on the wall? Yeah, definitely. As soon as we get back, it'll be on there. Flag will go up on the honour board for the next for the year and the trophy, which is the shield. It's, it's just, just unbelievable. unbelievable. Well, congratulations and again on an incredible accomplishment. Go out there, party hard and... <laughs> Well done. Thank you. This up. All good. Runner-up, unfortunately, didn't quite turn out the way that you would have liked. How are you feeling? I mean, disappointed would be an understatement. The dream is to win a premiership and we got so close. Um, but I'm pretty proud of the team regardless. Now, that being said, you are coming up against an absolute powerhouse team in the Port Adelaide Magpies. Now the most successful run of premierships ever. It was always going to be a big ass to try and topple that kind of dynasty. Yeah, and I mean, we gave you a red hot crack, but um, we weren't good enough today. So I guess we'll come back next year, um, keep fighting, and someone's got to beat them one day. <laughs> now, speaking of fighting, I was watching you girls out there. You never stopped. You fought the whole way through. So just from your end, like, how, how hard was it out there, just kind of like trying to keep playing all the way to the end? Uh, yeah, a little bit, but I guess the group of girls that we've got, we've matured so much together, considering where we were at the start of the year and how many new players and how new we are playing together. Um, it, the maturity in the girls is great and we love playing together. So it's really, I guess, easy in a way to keep fighting together and working for each other like that. Yeah. No well, congratulations on a stellar season and we'll look forward to seeing you again next year. Yeah. Cool. Thank Thanks. You. 